Hello, welcome to my talk. My name is Alessandra Breschi, and I led the transcriptomics analysis of the ENCODE 3 phase. I'm going to present the results of a collaboration between the teams of my PhD advisor, Roderick Gigo at the CRG, and Professor Thomas Gingeros at Cold Spring Harbor. I'll summarize here our main findings, but I invite you to read our recent publication in the July issue of Genome Research. Although we don't have exact numbers, it has been estimated that there are hundreds of different cell types in the human body, which are beautifully organized to make functional organs and systems. For comparison, when we look at the actual number of individual cells, it was estimated to be over a trillion in the human body. However, all these different cells in a single person share roughly the same genome. So we want to understand what differences there are in genome regulation that creates this diversity of cellular functions and phenotypes. As part of the ENCODE project, whose main objective is to build an encyclopedia of DNA elements, meaning classifying all sequences in the human genome and annotated function, we pursue two main objectives. The first was to characterize what makes each cell type different at the molecular level, and then use the cell type specific molecular signatures to understand how cell types are distributed to form complex organs. For this, we performed an integrated analysis of thousands of data sets from ENCODE, from other consortia such as GTEx, and from other published studies. In particular, we analyzed data from over 100 human primary cells, meaning extracted directly from tissues with very low passage number. And we looked at gene expression with RNA-seq, we looked at chromatin accessibility with uh, DNA-seq, and promoted data with Rampage and Gage. Then we wanted to relate these analysis with gene expression data from complex organs, both healthy from the GTEx project or cancer tissues from the PICO project. In our analysis, we also used thousands of um, single cell data, which is a high resolution than bulk RNA sequencing in terms of uh, cellular specificity and was very useful to confirm and generalize our findings. Unfortunately, I won't have time to talk about the single cell analysis here, but I invite you to read our paper if you are interested in it. The first thing that we did was clustering our primary cells by gene expression. As you can see on this slide, we have cells extracted from multiple sites of the body. So we were interested to see if the anatomic site had a stronger or weaker effect than the cell type on the clustering. Turned out that we could observe a pretty strong clustering by cell type. And in particular, we could identify four main cell types, mesenchymal cells, which included fibroblasts, smooth muscle cells, and mesenchymal or adult stem cells, melanocytes, endothelial cells, and epithelial cells. So if you look at the endothelial cells, for example, we had endothelial cells from blood, uh, from lymphatic vessels, from the heart, from uterus, lung, skin, etc. And they all clustered together, irrespective of their tissue of origin. On the other hand, if you look at an organ like lung, for which we had epithelial, endothelial, and mesenchymal cells, we still see stronger clustering by type than by the organ of origin. So next, we wanted to confirm if this clustering is still observed at different layers of genome regulation. So here I'm showing TSD embeddings of about 150 primary cell samples, each profiled with different combinations of RNA sequencing cage and DNA stick. It is not straightforward to integrate these data modalities, especially uh, chromatin accessibility and gene expression. So we find quite remarkable that cell type differences are stronger even than differences by assay. And again, we see epithelial, mesenchymal, and endothelial cell types like before. But here we also see blood and neural cells that form separate clusters. And we couldn't show that before with RNA sequencing only because we didn't have the RNA sequencing data for those cells. If you search on Google or read a histology book in your medical or biology training, you'll see that the main classification of tissues is among the traditional four types, connective, epithelial, muscle, and nervous tissue. This is, of course, a very valid classification. What we propose is an additional layer of classification that's based on the transcriptome of the cells. So in the context of the classification that we proposed, we observed that endothelial cells, although histological, histologically uh, they are a subtype of epithelial cells, they have a very distinct transcriptional profile. Same for blood cells, which are very different transcriptionally from the other mesenchymal cells. And then we observe more similarities between other connective tissue cells and muscle cells, which we collectively refer to as mesenchymal. 
We performed differential gene expression analysis on the cells for which we had RNA sequencing data and uh, identified about 3,000 cell type specific genes. You can see that breakdown in this heat map. The number of genes is in parentheses. And you can see that these genes are enriched for gene ontology terms that are descriptive of the related cell type. For example, endothelial specific genes are enriched for blood vessel development, and epithelial specific genes are enriched for epithelial cell differentiation. Here, I'm showing an example of an endothelial specific gene. Uh, in particular, it's a long encoding RNA of yet unknown function. In contrast, you can see how the flanking genes are ubiquitously expressed in all the cells. And again, to reiterate what we observed in the initial clustering, this gene is expressed in all endothelial cells regardless of their tissue of origin. Amongst the cell type specific genes, we identify 56 transcription factors, which form highly correlated clusters, depending again on the cell type. We use the transcription factors for which there was a known DNA motif, which is in square, to filter regions of open chromatin defined by DNA stick. So this slide is a bit complicated, but basically we looked um, if cell type specific transcription factors have more predicted binding to the promoters of cell type specific genes. So for example, if you look at ERG, which is an endothelial specific transcription factor, we find accessible ERG motifs more often in endothelial specific genes than in other genes in endothelial cells. In this slide, I'm showing um, only endothelial specific transcription factors. We have a similar result for epithelial genes and mesenchymal genes, but I won't show it here in the interest of time. Then we also looked at the impact of splicing on cellular variation. In this plot, we show the contribution of gene expression versus isoform usage to the changes in isoform abundances across cell types. We observed that most of the variation is due to changes in gene expression. However, we could still find more than 200 alternate splicing events that are cell type specific. This is one example uh, where we show preferential inclusion of exon 6 of MIL6, which is a myosin gene in mesenchymal cells compared to the other cell types. And exon 6 is uh, important because overlaps the EF hand motif of MIL6. Uh, we can also find a few cases of cell type specific promoter usage. Here I'm showing the example of a calcium binding protein S100A16, where a proximal promoter is mostly used in endothelial cells and uh, in melanocytes, while there is a distal promoter, which is used in the other cell types. I'd like to emphasize that all this data is available as a resource on the ENCODE portal and in the supplementary tables or paper. So I think we have shown that we could find a lot of molecular signatures that distinguish these cell types. Now we want to see how these different cell types are combined to form complex organ. For this, we used Excel, which computes an enrichment score for a given set of cell types in a given sample. Instead of using the shipped version of signature genes, we used the set of cell type specific genes that we identified previously. We ran Excel on about 8,000 samples from GDEX and we obtained enrichment scores for each cell type. Here you can see a summary of the results. The main observation is that, um, that we can make at first glance is that the enrichment scores are different across different tissue sites. More to that point, if we plot the samples based on the three dimensions identified by the enrichment scores for mesenchymal, endothelial, and epithelial, we can see that the samples form distinct groups, which shows that each organ has its own distinctive cellular composition, and this is reflected at the transcriptional level. Now I want to show three main examples, which highlight the importance of considering different cellular abundances when studying gene expression from complex organs. So the first example is about how a cellular composition can help us detect biases in the dissection of the sample. Here, I'm showing a slide of stomach sample, where we can clearly see two main histological components, an epithelial layer, which is called mucosa and is made of epithelial cells, and a muscularis layer, which is mostly made of smooth muscle cells, which are mesenchymal cells in our broader classification. So the GTEx consortium offers an amazing collection of histopathological slides from the same tissues where the RNA was extracted. And we found almost 200 stomach slides, which we classified as having only the mucosa layer, only the muscularis layer, or both. The initial classification was manual, and then we trained a super vector machine classifier, which had a 
over 80% accuracy, but we were able to use in-column samples as well, although I won't have time to talk about it uh, in this talk. Um, we then selected only the samples which we could classify as mucosa only or muscularis only, and looked at the expression of the most variable set type specific genes. We can see that epithelial specific genes are overexpressed in samples with only mucosa, while they're virtually absent in samples with only muscularis. The same is true for mesenchymal specific genes that are only expressed in samples with the muscularis only layer. So it's clear that we can discriminate between sets of stomach samples where only one or the other layer was affected for RNA sequencing. The second example I want to show is about using cellular composition to characterize some histopathological states. Here I'm showing enrichment values for breast samples in males and females, and some exemplary slides from the GTX portal again. It's pretty evident that there is a different, uh, difference between male and female, especially at the level of epithelial cells. And this is expected considering all the ductal structures that are present in the breast of females. However, there is a condition in males that's called gynecomastia, which is described as an enlargement or a swelling of breast tissue in males. You can see how in these individuals, the cellular composition is more similar to that of female, especially if you look at the epithelial cells. The last example I want to show is related to cancer. Um, this is especially relevant in clinical settings where single cell RNA seq is very expensive and RNA is usually sequenced for the entire tumor sample. Here, um, we are comparing cellular enrichment for endothelial cells across different tumor samples from the PICO uh, project. Kidney cancer is one of the few cancers for which there are also normal samples sequenced as part of the same project. And this is very important to verify that there is little batch effect when we compare enrichments across data sets that we could indeed apply this method to different projects. We can observe that all normal samples in green have similar distribution of endothelial enrichment scores. While if you look at the orange samples that are the primary cancers, they have higher scores, which we think could be related to increased vascularity in the cancer. The only exception are samples from CURP US, which is a cohort of renal papillary cell carcinomas, which are known to have reduced vascularity compared to the other kidney cancers. So, in conclusion, we identified five major subtypes with distinct transcriptional and regulatory programs, namely endothelial, epithelial, mesenchymal, blood, and neural. We can characterize the major subtypes across different molecular assays and modalities. We can infer characteristic cellular composition of entire complex organs from RNA-seq. And the, um, the cellular compositions are altered in some pathological states, including cancer. And it is really important to take that into account when studying gene expression from entire organs. So finally, I'd like to thank all the people that work with me on this project, in particular, um, Manuel Munoz Aguirre and Valentin Osher from the Gigo Lab that are um, co-first author with me on this paper. I'd like to thank uh, Tom Gingeros and his lab. It was uh, great collaborating with them. And I also like to thank Mike Snyder who hosted me during my postdoc at Stanford while I was uh, finishing up this paper. And um, thank you for your attention and I'd be happy to take any questions.